What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Last Days of Warcast. We are Southern California-based band, The Last Days of War. My name is Mark. I'm Rob. I'm Danny. I'm Feats and Beats. And gentlemen, first on the agenda, shots. Shots. Woo! Yeah, whiskey. Yay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> is it is it possible for dust to sit on liquid? For dust to sit on liquid? I'm yeah, pretty sure. I mean, that... Yeah. 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 It kind of tasted dusty. I don't know. If that's a good thing. Uh, what did you What did you drink? Some bottle labeled alcohol. It just said alcohol. <laughs> just rubbing alcohol. It well, says alcohol. <laughs> Do not drink. Rob, how have you been, sir? What's going on? Oh, it's dealing with weather. Hey, you're gonna get hit by a tornado. No, no, I'm just gonna have a really bad storm with some horrible traffic. <laughs> oh shit, uh, Danny. Good man, we did a graduation thing, and uh, it's uh, it was fun, but it's definitely nice to be on the other side of it, you know. Yeah, cool. Congratulations to your boy, by the way, dude. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Josh, how you been, Bert? How you been, sir? Bert, the fuck? I'm doing... <laughs> I'm doing good, man. I'm a little tired. Uh, my youngest daughter had her eighth birthday this past weekend, so my wife and I took her and a friend to Universal. And spent the day walking around there, and you got two eight-year-old girls running the show. So it was a long day. Nice. And we're going to well, do it again this week, so lucky me. Yeah, maybe one day you can tell that story later. Yeah, that'll be next week. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm doing fine. Uh, Danny and I went this past uh, Tuesday to go see Calva Louise in Hollywood. They were... Friends of ours from TikTok that we finally got to meet in person. They were absolutely incredible live. I expected them to be great as it was, and they, like, exceeded expectations, man. Just the the level of performance from, like, the two opening bands to them, it was, like, incredible. Uh, Danny, do you have anything to say about the show that you enjoyed? Yeah, I enjoyed it. And uh, we'll, uh, Rob, later on, we'll show you a video they made on TikTok of, the, of uh, one of the songs. It is, yeah. it is, yeah, it's great. Yeah, you're gonna, you'll love yeah, it. Yeah, dude. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah great show. Quick... They, they, uh, they killed it. It was awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just a quick shout out to Calvin Louise. If you guys don't know who they are, follow them on TikTok. Give them a follow. Uh, they have, they have way more songs than I realized. I, I still haven't gone through all their discography, but the further back I go, I didn't realize that they originally started out mostly singing in Spanish. And that yeah. as her English as her English got better, then they, she started doing more songs in English as well. But she does both because it was cool to see the crowd singing along to like all of their their older stuff. All like this, the I didn't realize how. Uh, like I said, I didn't realize that they had a lot of primarily Spanish songs, which was really awesome to see. So yeah, totally. Yeah. Where are they from? Yeah. Germany. Uh, UK. Yeah. Uh, so they got the the band the band got together in in England, I believe, and it's interesting because neither of them are from there. The singers from Venezuela, the drummers from I believe France, and the guitar players from Italy. No, the and guitar so, player, the guitar players from France, and the drummers from New Zealand. There we go. That's what it is. Yeah. So, but so they are uh, not really sure exactly how they all ended up together there, but. She had moved there, she was saying, to pursue her dream of music because it wasn't uh there wasn't a lot of outlets for it in Venezuela. So she she moved there to try to kick off her music career and she stumbled upon the rest of her band there. So yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. First. Good for that. Did you say Venezuela or Venezuela? Venice Venezuela. What did I say? Okay. I thought you said Valenzuela. I was gonna say, are you talking about Richie? <laughs> <laughs> Richie Valens, dude? Yeah. No, Bob. Bob. Dude, not, uh, not my Richie. Fuck, dude. Don't make me start crying. Dude. I love that movie. You, you know I'm always picture. ready to cry. I Don't make me cry. No. Sorry, man. Sorry, not man. My Richie. I'm going to get a shirt that says always ready to cry, dude. That's what it means. <laughs> yeah. So, Rob, uh, we we had started talking about a little uh, some stuff last week that you wanted to continue on. You want to take over on that? Go for it. Uh, kind of. Basically, I just want to talk about uh, more of the history between members. Um, I know several of us have done projects with each other, and um, 
different stuff and different timelines where we started crossing and this is how this came together. I kind of want to more explain that for people to get a better understanding of our dynamic. Sounds great. How about you? How about you kick it off? Go for it. Danny. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. 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 Danny. Yeah. Yeah. Marijuana yeah. fixed the memory. Uh, Danny. <laughs> well, I mean. um, so I met, I met Rob first. Uh, if I could recall, uh, it was at a guitar center, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we uh, we saw Rob in there. He's me and a buddy of mine, and Rob was playing guitar, messing around with keyboards, and I don't know if we approached him, asked him what was up, but I think we found out that he was a singer, and uh, shortly after, we uh, started getting together and jamming in the garage, you know? Oh, yeah. Whatever happened with that project? Uh, you know, we, we had a lockout studio and we wow. spent a lot of time there. I don't think we ever released anything and I don't oh. know if we ever played a show. So I think we, we just, we I think we only had one song. Yeah. We, had a we, we played a lot of, we played a lot of video games and we drank a lot of beer and all of that but, stuff, you know? But I, I is think this, the, this, uh, is this the working. haunted, the haunted lockout that you guys have told me about? <laughs> yeah. Please go into that. Yeah, bro. The stories, just the stories from this place alone, we could do a whole episode just on the vault. We could do um, a whole go. series. No, God, no, no. <laughs> I mean, it, it's P Town and all the crackheads that would run around at night, and then you're in a lockout, and then you go outside for a cigarette, and you're just like, uh, I gotta go back inside and not watch my car get broken into. And then you go uh, back inside, and it's spooky and creepy as fuck, and you see things and hear things, and it's like, Shit. Well, yeah, but I mean, us being demented assholes at that time, we were constantly fucking with Danny, or like flicking on and off the lights in the whole building. Oh shit! <laughs> Just fuck you guys. I'm swinging at everything. Danny go walking down the hall, <laughs> swinging his arms like fuck you. I'll knock you out. <laughs> like okay, this joke. I don't know if this joke's appropriate anymore. Um, but yeah, just just that alone. Like we, I think we only had one song that we kind of memorized because back then we didn't have the smartphones where you could pull out and record it right then and there. I think we only had like a tape recorder. So we were four track in this and that was the only way we could remember the song was by a four track tape. And it was based off who had the tape that week. And yeah. Yeah. Well, other than that, I think we were jamming Slipknot songs and Deftone songs. The name of the song was Ice Cream. Ah. Ice Cream. Was it about ice cream? Well, no. It was when I screamed. When I screamed, yeah. I figured that that's where that was going. That's cool, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, but it was like, oh, shit, because we'd always hear the ice cream man pass by the garage. So it was like, ice cream. <laughs> and that was how we fucking came up with the song, was just this ice cream man that kept passing about the house while we were practicing. Hey, man, you got to write about what's important, dude. You know what I'm saying? I feel that. That's really well, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then we found out about pussy, and it was like, ah, oh, this goes downhill from here. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't do it. You guys are right about that screen the whole time. That's hilarious. Uh, no, but we, so we were in a project, which was kind of cool because back then we ran into a bunch of people in that little practice room who ended up becoming bigger shit today. Uh, yep. Right next door to us was uh, this group called what the Karma Soldiers. Right? Yeah. Okay, so they were the karma soldiers and they're playing, they're they're in their band practice room. You they got a female fronted chick who tries to look like Jonathan Davis. She had the Adidas jumpsuit. She had like the ratty natted dreads, you know, and you were like, Oh man, who does this chick think she is? And so one day we're we're jamming at practice and we hear the band next to us, these karma soldiers. They start playing uh, Paul Revere by Beastie Boys. And they're doing a cover of it. And so us trying to practice at the same time, we're like, fuck it. Let's play Sabotage. And then they went into uh, Brass Monkey, right? <laughs> so then we ended up going into, like, Fight for Your Right. And then that's when we hear a knock on the door. And they just come over. We all just start drinking and hanging out. Come to find out. That the singer of this band, this ratty-haired girl dressed like Jonathan Davis, ended up becoming Otep. 
Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Right. Okay. And so we're just like, oh, shit, I know you. So then when she got big, I was like, Pomona, you were at the you were at the lockout. We we did the thing with the thing. She's like, ah, yeah, I remember. But go back now and she'd probably be like, who are you? Yeah. But. Yeah. If you meet her now, she'll just tell you, you guys got to wait outside while I sound check. So. No. Hey, hey, I technically didn't leave the building. Yeah. But I, I remember that uh, our previous project that Mark and I were in, we had the pleasure of opening up for OTEP before, and she had a meet and greet that took place during our sound check. And basically, if you were done with your sound check, you needed to get the hell out of the building while she finished her meet and greet. It didn't matter if you were in a band or not. If you were done, she wanted you out of the building. Yeah. Probably because you no, had a dick. Yeah, and nobody, <laughs> and none of the opening bands were allowed upstairs in the green room area either. Like, they're, they, they, like, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. I'm, I'm, so. I'm curious if this has changed over time, though. I mean, because I, I'm not hating. I'm not throwing shade. My boy plays drums for her to this day. Uh, but I'm just curious if she's still at that status level where you can make such demands. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess at the whiskey, it all depends on who's getting paid that night, right? Yeah, I, I think mean, that's what it is. I understand like having a home bar and having clout and pull at your home bar, but I just yeah. don't know if... I mean, have they done a whole lot I, I mean i know they they're still releasing music but uh, i'm not i'm not hating there's no shit being from uh but you said like, I'm not but fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. oh boy uh but you said previous project that you guys jammed with talk about yeah. that yeah uh josh i will let you take the steering wheel when it comes to how we first met because I know it was at a show, but I don't remember where I met you for the first time. I don't remember exactly when it was. Okay, this had to be over 12, 13 years ago. Uh, I was in a previous project called Raw Sunrise, I believe. And we were playing in uh, Riverside. And I think it was called The Vibe at that time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, we were the headlining band of that night, whatever the hell you want to call it. <laughs> and you guys had played before us. And um, there was a situation where your drummer was going to be leaving. And I guess you guys hung out and stuck around and watched my band play, which happened to have your bass player at the time I was jamming with in my other band. So it was kind of like your bass player pulled me into the project that you guys were in called No One's Mercy. Mm. I was not the original drummer of that project. You had somebody else who were still, we still talk to to this day. Like he actually came up and played a couple songs when we played the whiskey a few times. So like there's no hard feelings there or anything at all with their drummer. It was just he needed to leave for personal family reasons and my band at the time wasn't really doing too much so we just kind of i guess i said screw it let's let's give it a try let's try it out and it just worked from then on and i did shows with these guys for years yeah yeah man i also remember i remember when you joined our writing changed dramatically because our previous drummer he didn't play double bass pedal he didn't play the he didn't play double bass at all he didn't he didn't like it uh, and so when Josh joined, I remember Alec getting really, really, really excited. Oh, dude, we've got a double bass player, double, double pedal, uh, bass player right here. Double bass player. Uh, we can't even get one. <laughs> take advantage of this, you know? <laughs> so I just, cause it was, it was, a it, it was an interesting time right before Josh joined. It was like, we were still trying, trying to find our footing of what we were going to be. There was like. Some, if you want to call them metal songs, but also there was like more like funk and stuff, influence stuff as well, because of our previous drummer. Uh, that's what he, he loved, you know, that's mm -hmm. what he still loves to this day. So, I mean, give the boy a shout out, Stan, dude, Sandy, man, he's he's our boy, he's still our boy to this day. Uh, but 
yeah, man. So it was just, it was cool to see that the transformation of what no one's mercy slowly became after Stanny left, because I think had he had stayed, it would have been an entirely different project. It would have been an entirely different sound other, other than what it became with Josh. And uh, yeah, so it just, that's one thing that I just think remember is just knowing that the, the style of the way we wrote and stuff changed and it was cool. Uh, it was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, now, Mark, you were in the project with Dustin? I was, yes. I was in, so in my, the second project that I was in, uh, it'll remain nameless. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I'm just curious. Uh, from uh, Josh's project, the project you were in with Josh, to the project you were in with Dustin, what's the timeline there? Uh, I took, I want to say, like a year and a half, maybe two years off of um from music my daughter my daughter had just been born and i was just kind of you know at home doing the dad thing and then honestly i wasn't sure if i wanted to to get back into it and then i realized that i really missed it and uh you know i, I had kind of posted on i think i'd posted on facebook one day somebody would want to start a band just kidding maybe you know like let's let's see what happens and then i ended <laughs> I'm up just joking, not really uh... yeah just kidding you know whatever <laughs> Help you, my delete. So when I so when I was when I was in that band, Dustin was never technically a full member. He didn't. He liked playing the shows. He liked playing the live shows with us, but he didn't uh, want to join the band for the same reason I left the band, which was the other dude in the band who was just kind of a control freak about everything. So uh, he was just like, "Yeah, I have fun playing these shows with you guys, but I'm not going to join the band because I know." what it's like to work with that dude. So <clears throat> Dustin and I became really good friends through that project. And even after that project ended, he and I remained friends, you know, on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Uh, you keep in touch with people these days. And yeah, so when we were looking for another guitar player or a bass player, he played, he does, he does both. So we were like, well, let me hit this dude up and it started off as him just filling in for us, but now he, he actually, I told him, I was like, do you want to be a part of this project? And he was like, yeah, actually, absolutely. So, yeah. So that's pretty yeah. cool. I, I think the most interesting dynamic is when Danny meets with you. How did that happen? So also it involves the second project because Danny tried out for that band. And, oh, how'd you do? Yeah. I'll tell you what. He killed it at the, he killed it at the rehearsal. Like, he killed it when he got there because he's fucking phenomenal, obviously. But like the other guy, he Danny couldn't make a rehearsal one day, dude. One rehearsal because he had to work. And the other dude straight up sends this dude a message without my knowledge and is like, "Hey man, it's not going to work out. Thanks for trying to. Uh, we need somebody to be here all the time." I was like, "For one rehearsal, bro? For one rehearsal?" <laughs> I was like. <laughs> Okay, dude. So when uh, he ended up when uh, so Danny didn't end up joining the project. When I left that band, I always was just I was like, dude, I want to work with Danny because just based off the one time that we met and what you were playing and stuff like that, I knew what you could do. And then I believe it was because of that drummer that you and I remained a connection. Correct, Danny? Yeah. Yeah. So that drum so that that drummer was the drummer for this project for a very brief period in the beginning of this band. That guy? Okay, I'm yeah. that guy. So he was he was uh he he had started this with Danny and was like, "Hey, I'm going to work with Danny. You want to give it a shot?" And as soon as he said he was going to work with Danny, I was like, "Oh, absolutely, dude, because I felt that homeboy fumbled it with him by telling them to leave over one rehearsal. So <clears throat> I believe you'd sent me some songs, right, Danny? How did, how did, how did, how do you remember our interaction going? Yeah, I think, I think something along those lines, I think I, you know, we had shot you a song or two and then, you know, we started getting together and started mm. putting some stuff together. And then, uh, yeah, I think around that times where COVID hit, right? Yes. Yeah. And everything just so, kind of, yeah. 
Yeah, so we, we kind of halted on getting together so much because it was like everybody was, everything kind of was slowing down and, you know, we were kind of all not really like hanging out, you know? Yeah. Um, so we kind of pumped the brakes on things for a little bit. And then once uh, COVID started kind of, you know, slowing down and things were, were kind of rolling again. Uh, Rob's I remember face. We, us... I remember we were talking about it at the same time I hit up Rob. Um, I called up Rob and was kind of like, Hey, you know, working on something. Here's a few songs. Let me know if you'd be interested and talk to Rob. I think, believe we talked about uh, doing two singers. We talked about you and uh, it was one of those things. Cause it was at a, a beyond retaliation show where, Rob What's was that? there too, and then I that's where I saw that you guys knew What's each other. Name. Don't say What's it twice that? though. You say it two more times, they come back to yeah, no, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, Justin, what is that? Because you said the name, but it's cool. Go oh. ahead. Uh, so I knew that you guys knew each other, and I was kind of like, if I could get these guys to kind of work together. Lot. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think we could do something really cool. And you know, when I kind of approached every about funny about it, um, I don't think there was any opposition at all. You know, I think it just yeah. from there it just kind of started coming together. And then we uh, we parted ways with the drummer. Um, you know, Rob. <laughs> when Rob came in, there was some some things that he wanted to. You know, some adjustments he wanted to make. He wanted wait, to change. Wait, wait, a couple wait, 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 wait. <laughs> when I was proposed this project, it was yeah. like, oh yeah, here's our influences. And it was like uh Deftones, Slipknot, um like a perfect circle. And I'm like, oh okay, okay. I don't hear slipknot in any of this. No, right. no, no, it's in there, it's in there. And I'm just like, yeah, I don't I don't think Slipknot would play any of this. So then it was like, hey, Danny, let's speed this up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, well, like I said, so we making some of those adjustments and changes, the other person wasn't really keen on it. And I think it just I think it just kind of came down to the like, well, you don't want to go that way. He wants to go that way. I'd like to go that way. So you're going that way, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. which is fine, you know, creative differences, but wish well, you we the best, talking about music. We're not talking about, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> it could be misconstrued if you just popped into this conversation. It's all about music. Uh, <laughs> about going, going the way of heavier, faster, as opposed to heavier, melodic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. I'm, I'm not against heavier, melodic, but it was like, Every fucking song was like, okay, yeah. really? Yeah. And I'm like, oh no. No, 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 no. This car ain't going anywhere. Well, like I said, like I said, there was there was kind of uh I'm I'm really big on not having a lot of constraints. So as soon as you start telling me like, hey, I really don't want to do anything over a certain beat per minute, I'm just kinda of like, I feel like that door should just be wide open, you know? Yeah. So I mean that's just me. So yeah. Yeah. I think the original songs that you'd sent me uh, was like the original version of uh Breaking the Mold and uh much slower. In yeah, Into the Stars. Yeah, actually a video popped up in my memories the other day of like the original Breaking the Mold. Dude, that's it was so slow, dude. Like I can't believe yeah, yeah what it became. Well, like, and, it's crazy you to know, see. And, and like I said, I completely agreed with Rob. And like I said, mm -hmm. we started kind of chipping away at things and making some changes. And, you yeah. know, I already kind of saw a conflict coming. So I just said, okay, well, let's just. And I like the, I like, I like the middle ground that we found, you know, we have our heavier stuff. We have our, our melodic, our melodic, you know, ballady stuff. And uh, I, I like, I like it because Rob tends to pull out something different out of me vocally with these heavier songs and then I get robbed. Of, hey, dude, I know you can fucking sing. In Remain Untamed, the part where, uh, like, right before it goes into the breakdown, <laughs> it's, it, when, it's like, 
when he when he does the when he does the remain untamed, he does it in the background. I was like, bro, sing it. Like I remember you were trying to like scream it, and I was like, no, bro, sing it. And I love I love that part of your voice, dude. That when you let that shit go like that as well. I just think it's cool that like we we pull out different dynamics of each other depending on what song that it is that we're doing because it's kind of more like that's more your element this is more my element and this is how we kind of see things going and we're open minded to it you know and not only just like hey do this but do this but also what do you think and how would you put your spin on it you know yeah scream this through your butthole <laughs> So what's that sound like, Rob? What's that sound like? Rob? Here's, here's what you're gonna do. I need you to eat this hot sauce. You got six hours. To put me on the mic. Go. <laughs> Rob and Josh, do you guys have any uh, memory of like you guys first meeting? Um, I just remember him joining your project, the first one, mm -hmm. and when we were doing shows together, and I was like, oh. You guys got Rob Zombie on drums. Fuck yeah. <laughs> is he, that was is he back when I had dreads. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, God damn it. They got Rob Zombie on the drums. This has to be good. Uh, and so that's kind of how I was like, oh, fuck. They might, they might be serious now. And, you know, uh, unfortunately, bands go the way they do. Like, yeah. some of my projects where you're just like, hey, you guys were on the up and what the fuck? Like, what happened? Oh, hey, yeah. what? Even though all of even though all of our previous stuff didn't obviously pan out, I'm glad it was all there because it made us all who we are today. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, is there any uh, last things you guys want to say before we uh, end this episode? Because I think we ran over a little bit here. Uh, <laughs> one, we got our uh, new release dropping this week. We do. Oh, six. And uh, uh, that's uh, "Remain Untamed" nocturnal mix. Yes. Uh, be sure to give it a listen on Spotify. Pre-save it so you can listen to it the second it comes out. Yes. And I also believe we have a date set for the second one. We do. You want to give them that date? <laughs> no, I want this to be you yeah. guys. This is, Go this ahead, Danny. So Danny, you uh, explain this one. So the date that I think we're looking at is uh, 7 11. And 7 11. Free Slurpee Day. Why would we want to release a song called Little Karma on 7 Eleven? You know, I don't know if there's anything happening on that day, but I, <laughs> yeah, I right. think, I mean, I think it may have something to do with a little karma coming somebody's way, but you know, Little Orange we'll Dude. See. Yeah, <laughs> I think, I think it's just great that the timing on it lines up and it's like, you know, former president being, yeah. you know, I just so, love know, instantly Rob's text. So we're dropping the song on 7 Eleven, right? I know. Yeah, yeah, like that, we, that's we what's funny. Yeah. Have a song Never forget. ready to go right then. And it's like, we oh, would, we would have, if, if that wasn't happening, we would be releasing it that first Friday of that month, which would be right. I mean, I think it's a couple days after that. So yeah, yeah, for sure. We're, we're right on track anyway. So we might as well just, hey, a little karma that situation you know so you get a little justice and a free slurpee i like it you get a free song you, you get music drink your free slurpee, slurpee to uh, little karma yeah all righty guys with that being said this has been the last days of war class you guys please check out the link in our bio all of our merch all of our links to everything that we got uh download pre-save for apple music and spotify for uh, remain on team nocturnal mix all righty guys we are the last days of war we're out